fascinating man and we'll be talking to Archie, how long have you been living in South Sea? Uh, about 18 months. And why did you move there? Uh, we, um, we decided this was the best place for us after coming back from Europe. We, uh, we done a runner from uh, Loch Ness, Drummond Rocket, uh, because of media pressure and uh, went to Europe uh, but we failed over there and come back to uh, Southampton. So it was 18 months you've been living in South Sea, minding your own business, but all of a sudden your story is out. <coughs> yeah, because we had some sticky beak reporters uh, want to do an interview and uh, do stories on me once again because it had been too quiet and wanted to know where we were. Now, we have to say that you came to us with this story, but did you do the newspaper interviews? Uh, no. No. I've, I've done a couple of interviews, but not recently, no. I haven't done any interviews, no comments. So why was that? I don't trust the papers. Now, for the people that, that don't know, I, th I think we have to go into your story and find out where it all starts. You were born in Scotland. You emigrated to Australia when you were eight years old. That's correct. Now, were you married when you had your young baby? Uh, yes, I was. I was married to a lady called Janice. Uh, she was my first wife. And uh, my son, Craig, was born on the 4th of February 1973, died the 18th of March 1973, exactly six weeks to the day. So six weeks old. Yes. And this, you say, is what pushed you over the head. That's correct. I, uh, when my uh, first wife, Janice, suffocated my baby in bed, uh, even to this day, I still believe that she did it on purpose. I don't believe it was an, it was an accident. I still believe she killed my child. Um, I didn't go to my son's uh, funeral uh, in the sense of going. Three months later I went down to his grave. I was on angel dust, PCP as it's known, and uh, I hallucinated and my son come back in a light and he was about 19, 18 years old and he said, Dad, kill seven people and I'll come back to life. Uh, within half an hour there was one person killed on the grave. Actually in the cemetery? Yes. So. Did you kill seven people? Uh, no comment on that. Well, uh, let's just say that when you were put in prison, you I were was put I was charged with killing three people, and uh, I was charged later on with killing a prisoner in prison also. But uh, let me say here for the record, uh, out of the three people that died in my uh, murders, I'm absolutely responsible for the three murders but I'm responsible for taking the life of one of them. The gang members took the life of two others, and the murder in prison that I was found guilty of manslaughter on, I was totally innocent of that murder, but I was involved in three other murders within the prison system. So you're saying that of the three that you were convicted of when you got put inside, you actually did one, I but the other one two... Person. I stabbed a man called George Anson to death. And the other two, you were in involved with a gang? Uh, I had a a cult following, a commune. It was, uh, it was a hippie days back then and uh, Australia basically dubbed it because they wanted to become Americanized back then and they dubbed me Australia's Charlie Manson. There was no similarities other than I had a commune the same and uh, Australia was so hungry to have some form of Americanization they grabbed this tag, uh, Charles Manson of Australia and that was because of the, the commune and the group that lived there. They were all misfits and freaks from society. Do you think you played on this infamy at all? Because when you were in court, you threatened to, to cut the head off of the prosecution barrister. Well, you've got to understand that, uh, I mean, this was over 30 years ago. You've got to understand my, my state of mind back then was out of tune with reality. I won't say I was insane. I won't say I was sane. But the, the confusion between five psychiatrists were totally, uh, they didn't know what was wrong with me. Uh, one had me down as a paranoid schizophrenic, the other one had me down as a psychopath, the other one had me down of being out of tune with reality. So I, I, I think basically I was grieving for my son's death and it affected me differently to what it may affect yourself. So the psychiatrist couldn't even agree on what was wrong with you, but you were given three life sentences and then for the murders in prison you got another 14 years. How long did you eventually serve? Uh, it's 25 years. And what happened when you came out? Uh, well, o over the 25 years, up until about 20 years, I continually applied for parole after the 15 year mark uh, because that's the way Australia do it. And uh, 
each year I applied for parole, Judge Torrington kept refusing me. Uh, there was a sort of a hate and hate relationship and love relationship between me and this Judge Torrington because he was never ever convinced that I was a rehabilitated man. But uh, for about five years I appealed and appealed and went back for parole and he kept deferring it, saying no, not at this time, you're a danger to the community, blah blah blah. And uh, in 1986 we had a thing called Truth in Sentencing, uh, which was Americanized in Australia and it was three strikes you're out basically. And uh, in 1986, that come into force, September 1986, in 1990, I, w I went back to court, to the High Court of Australia against Justice Woods, and he decided that I'd served enough time to be given a parole date. So he backdated my sentence to 20 years non-parole with life on top. But of course, I still continue to do more time, and seven years later, after the parole date, I finally won my release. When you came out, were you a reformed man? I, I, when you talk about rehabilitation, let, let, let me say this first. Rehabilitation in prisoners does happen. Not at all. In 10 out of 100, it will happen. My rehabilitation was caused through a lady. I, m I met uh, my, my wife, Amanda Queen, uh, in 1981, and she showed me another side of life. At that time, Manny was about 14 and a half years old, so therefore it was taboo to even consider or contemplate anything with Mandy. Uh, it would have branded me a uh, dirty old man. So in 81 you were in prison now. How did you That's meet? She was 14. Well, my, my, my wife uh, actually got uh, a, a program from her school to do a human studies uh, program of all things. And uh, I happened to be a human studies. And uh, she came in, visited me got to know me, see what made me tick, but three years later fell in love with me. So you came out of prison, you say rehabilitation, rehabilitation can work. If you're reformed, are you mentally ill? Uh, no, I'm not mentally ill. I think uh, I'm a manic depressant at the moment because of all the publicity on me. Uh, and I, I do have a lot of... Uh, depressive moments because of all the, pre the, the, the media hype with me because um, I may have been released from prison but I am a prisoner still. For five and a half years I've been released. Society haven't, ac ha haven't accepted the fact that I earned my release over a 15 year period. I was declared sane by six psychiatrists. I worked on works release for five years. I was in the community for three years each weekend, five days a week on works release from 3 o'clock to 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I travelled to and from work on my own, travelled back to the prison, trustworthy, and never once failed to go back to the prison. I never did anything dishonest. All I worked for was my release. So you've proved yourself that you're okay, you're back in society, you've maybe reformed. What kind of media harassment are you getting now then? Because here you are on TV. Well, I got released on the 1st of May, 1997. I have never been allowed to be free from the media. The Daily Record, The Sun, The Independent, The Telegraph, The Scotsman, The Evening News, you name it, I'm in it for some reason or other. I mean, we just had a recent uh, murder here in Cottage Grove and I, I'm implicated in that. And I didn't even know nothing about it because I wasn't in this country. All these newspapers you're in, are they paying you vast amounts of money for your story? I haven't received a penny. Is that what I have to get a story? No, it doesn't upset me. I, I've, I've come to you and said it's not about money. And I think, uh, I think you should believe that. But uh, this is not about money. It, what it is, it's about being accepted, being given my freedom, not having to run, not having to hide, and stop being a prisoner. I've got two friends in this city who own a B&B here, and uh, I've known them for 18 months, and they're like a mum and dad to me, Chris and June. And uh, I love them very much, yet I can't tell people these are my friends because I'm afraid that the media will harass them. Give them a hard time as well. You say that when you get all this kind of a harassment, you've got people you can turn to, you've got people in the, the police that you should be able to turn to for help. Are you getting the help you need? No, I'm not getting the help. I've, 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 got, I've got pretend help. 
Uh, police have turned me down constantly when I've asked for help. We've got one particular incident right now. Last Wednesday I asked to see a psychiatrist. The police officer's name is Jerry White. And uh, I asked him last Wednesday, I said, I'm feeling very depressed, I'm not feeling myself, I'm slipping backwards. And it wasn't until today, Monday, five days later, that I've been rung up and said, I've got your help now. 30 years ago, I asked Dr. Blows and Dr. Hobday, two psychiatric doctors at Parramatta Psychiatric Centre. I went to my son's grave, my son spoke to me, I went to him, both these doctors, and told them, I need help. Don't release me into society. My mother and father were there, took me there, and pleaded with these doctors not to release me. So very quickly, if you're not going to get the help that you've asked for, could you go back to your old ways? It's possible, yes. I mean, you believe that you should be given a chance. You've, you've done the time. You did, what, 30 years? I've done 25 years. All up, I've done 37 years in prison. And uh, this is the first time in my life uh, through a wonderful woman who now I've been separated from and my children because of all this media publicity over the five years. Uh, my wife can't take it anymore. My children won't be able to stand up to it, so I have to be separated from my children. They're 13,500 miles away. I'll never ever see my four-year-old or my five-month-old child again because of the constant harassment here to my family. But you're saying that for the last 18 months you've been living in South Sea, minding your own business, nobody knew that you were even here, so give me a chance. Uh, no one but the police. No one but the police and, and maybe two members of the uh, Housing Association. Archie, thanks very much for coming in. Uh, you're welcome.